coming up. I will not mess that up. I want points for that. So I'm going to go over the chart of accounts, um, and then if we have some time, this, if I don't get through everything, if we have some time this afternoon with our miscellaneous, I'll try to touch anything that we didn't get covered on that. And basically, um, we've talked about this before, the chart of accounts is a tool. It's just a way to organize your information, organize your funds so you can track your financial transactions, so you can report those financial transactions. The uniform chart of accounts for counties, which is what is on our website, is, was a mechanism so that when your information is reported on Gateway, it's, it's as uniform as possible uh, between the counties. So if, if someone is looking at Gateway and they're looking at one county and comparing it to another, the names mean something, that there, there is some uh, uniformity, some consistency with that. And that is why we introduced the uniform chart of account. Um, one of the issues that I know a great, great issue for all of you is that our chart of accounts does not match DLGFs and it causes a lot of issues for you. We are aware of that. We are working on that, although I first to admit that process is slow. Um, part of our issues in order to combine with DLGF entirely, we have to include all of our units because the uniform chart of accounts is just counties. It doesn't include townships, schools, cities, towns. We've got to include all of that, then make it work with all of what DLGF purposes need and probably do a lot of reprogramming or get some new systems. So it is going to take some time, but we are aware of it and we are working on it just so that you're aware of that. Okay, the, chart, the uniform chart of accounts, which is what I'm going to talk about now, is organized um, so that you start out with, um, with areas. So your um, first organizational area is your statutory funds, and then it goes into your local authority funds, then your accounting funds, your settlement funds, um, your remittance, then your federal grants and your state and local grants. Um, and it's important to keep that in mind because when you're trying to figure out what number you need to use for a new fund, you need to know where it's located within that organizational. The, um, I don't even know if I left it on. When you go, um, oh, this is my one attempt at animation. So please appreciate this because this is all you get. I gave up. <laughs> I, I got. I got PowerPoint for dummies, and this is as far as I got. But as I read the book, I may get better. I don't know. <laughs> so I guess I did it on two. OK. So your statutory funds start with the, the 1,000 number. Um, on our website, you have three forms under our chart of accounts. You have the actual chart of accounts. Um, you have a fund description, which is for mainly your statutory funds, but does go into the others as well. Um, and then you have a written, a, a Word document that explains a lot of what I'm going over today. So you will have that. That's always on our web page. So you, if you want to go back and look at it, it's there. So I'm going to start with the statutory funds. Those start with the 1000 series. Okay, these are established by statute. And so these are the ones that are, should be absolutely consistent across all counties. There is, a, there is a statute that established it that, said it that set its fund source of funding and its purpose. And so when you use these funds, you should be using it for that purpose. And if that fund does not suit your purpose, that is not the fund you should be using. So you sh at locally, you should not be assigning any numbers. You should just be adopting the ones that are already there and using them for that purpose. And I hope that's kind of clear, but those, those are specific funds and they should be the same no matter what county you're in. They should be used for the same purpose. That fund and description will give you the statute, so the statute tells you what the source and the purpose of that fund is. Okay. Within that, we do have some with sub-accounts, and that is to give you some flexibility within those funds. And so those are going to be different from county to county. But those sub-accounts should roll up into that one account so that when you're reporting it, then you have that consistency again. The most common one is going to be like your user fee fund. 
2,500 is your user fee fund. We left the numbers below that available so that you could identify the specific user fees that you're accounting for. When you report that in Gateway on your annual report, all of those roll up so that you just have one number to report under user fee. But in your funds ledger, you're going to be able to track uh, receipts, disbursements, and ending balances for each particular user fee. And that's what I mean by subaccounts. Um, payroll is not a statutory fund, but it has subaccounts uh, like that. Um, drains would be another one. You have, a, you have your uh, drain maintenance fund, and then you're going to have a subledger with your individual drain accounts. Okay, then you have your local authority funds. These start with the 4,000. Now these are not going to be consistent from, fund, from county to county. We've established some that we think a lot of counties do use, so those are in the chart of accounts, and you can use those, and those would be consistent if you have them. Um, but a lot of these are going to be unique to your county. And I don't know if I can... I want to show you this because this is kind of important to me. I don't know if I can find it. Okay. What I have verbally said in the past, and what we really want to encourage and may become a prescribed procedure, it's not at this point, is for you to have, in addition to your chart of accounts, some kind of local chart of accounts where you have tracked for your county, very similar to the fund and description list that we have for the statutory funds. You can do it in Excel as I've done it here. I'd be happy to send this to anybody who wants, but I just kind of made this up. You can have any form you want with it. But basically doing the same thing. What number you're using out of the 4,000 series, the name, which should pretty much tell you, hopefully, what that fund is for, but very descriptive name. That's going to be unique to your local, to your county. What ordinance established this fund? And this is really, really important because we get a lot, Shannon and I get a lot of calls and they say, number, you know, fund 4702, we don't know what to do with it. Well, we don't know what to do with it either because we don't know why it was established. So you need to know what statute established that fund, what the purpose of that fund is in order to know what to do with it. So something like this chart is really, really important because what it's going to do is not only be a tool for you now, but a great gift to your future auditors because 10 years down the road, they're not going to have to dig all this information up again. And a lot of you have been digging this information up. You know how difficult it is sometimes to find this. So if you can start something like this where you're actually tracking, again, what, what fund, uh, the number and the name, but what ordinance supports it, and then maybe, you know, putting off of here what, you know, a kind of a summary of what was the purpose. What was the source of the funding for this and what was the purpose? What did your commissioners intend for this fund to be used for, or council, whoever set up the fund? Right. It can be done in Excel. You can do it any way. You could put it in a binder and actually make copies of those ordinances that, that establish funds and put that in there. It's a great tool, again, for you. It'll be a great tool for, for RFEs when you come in to audit. So we know what those funds should be used for. So um, there's a, this sample, and again, I made all of this up. For, well, the, the 4,002 and 6 are two that, uh, for example, that we, we think there are kind of common between counties, and so we have a number for that. If your county has a golf course, you might use that. If you don't, you won't. Um, donation funds, are, they have a series for that. But of course, within that, you're going to have whatever your unique donation is for. Um, the debt service funds, again, there's a series for that, but you're going to, to have a, a particularly uh, or a bond ordinance that establishes what you're going to do with that money when you get the money, what you're going to do, the debt service funds, to repay that debt. So those are debt service and capital project. And the really, really important ones are those local home rules funds that start with the 4,900. Those are the ones that are completely unique and not real obvious, always obvious on the surface what they're for.
Okay, another question we get a lot is dormant funds, and this kind of ties into what I was just talking about. If you have a fund, you're looking at your funds ledger, and you have a fund that has not been used for several years, um, no receipts, no disbursements out of it, you need to take a closer look at that fund. It may or may not be dormant, uh, but there's a good indication that it is. If it's a local um, ordinance fund that maybe was established for a particular department, get back with that department head, find out if they're even aware they have the fund, if they are going to use it, if they're going to continue what they want um, the intent of that is. If it is um, a grant fund, then you may need to get a hold of the grantor agency, determine what should have happened with the, the balance left in that fund. If it's a local ordinance, hopefully your ordinance says what to do when the purpose of the fund has been accomplished, what to do with any balance in that. If it's not, you need to take those back to uh, your governing body that established the fund and ask them what to do with that. Um, the, the important thing to remember with those dormant funds is they're just sitting there, that that money is not being used. So you need to look at it, if you, you're going several years without activity, you really need to look at it and to see what was the intent of that fund, is that purpose been accomplished, can we use this money somewhere else, how do we get that going, you know, get that back into um, an operating fund that we can use it for that. Um, we do have um, a bulletin article, the January 2011 bulletin, that talks a little bit more about dormant funds um, and what to do with them. Um, there is specific uh, guidance in the statute for debt service funds when, when the debt's been repaid and you still have a balance in there, so it's a good resource to look at. Okay. Accounting funds. We have seen, I think it's getting better, but we have seen reports um, where they have comments in the past. Your accounting funds are a clearing fund, so we really expect those for the most part to be clearing out. Now, they won't always have zero balances depending on timing issues, but there's, these are accounting funds that you're holding until you do something else with them. Payroll is the most common. You have um, um, payroll clearing funds where you're moving your money in there, maybe you, you, you're withholding or matching, and then you're going to send a quarterly payment to your uh, uh, remit to whatever provider, if it's health insurance or life insurance or any of those, um, those type of third party. Usually you're, you're withholding, you're sending each payroll. But again, you're running it through there so you can account for what's been withheld, what's been remitted. So at any time, you should know in that balance, you should be able to identify who that balance belongs to. Again, if you've got money in there that you can't identify, that's another place that maybe too much got pulled in there and should be put back into your operating fund. So you need to look at those balances. If you have any questions, call us. We'll be happy to help you work through those. Settlement funds, those are another form of um, accounting funds used during settlement. Again, kind of like payroll, you're pulling that money into those funds, and then you're going to use those to account for your distributions out to your other taxing units. Your property tax relief is part of that, and um, Courtney talked about that yesterday for getting those old LOWIT funds closed out and moved over. Again, if you have any questions, um, give us a call. Okay, remittance funds, there's two kinds. You're either remitting to the state, so that's like fines and forfeitures that were talked about yesterday, or you're remitting to other, you know, other local units, your wheel tax or surtax or, or uh, local income tax that you've collected as a county that you're then going to distribute out. And again, these funds are clearing accounts. These aren't operating funds, so you should never be dispersing money from these funds. You should be distributing money, sending it to the appropriate um, third party, whether it's the state or whether it's other local units. But you should not be paying county claims out of these funds. And we see sometimes that, that we're not looking at what the number is and where we're organizing it in the chart, and so that you're using some of these as operating funds and then the, the, the statutory. If you look at something like your local income tax, um, it can have a very similar number in the 7,000 series and in the, in the 1,000 series. The 1,000 series are your county funds, and the 7,000 are your remittance funds. And we've seen those sometimes, excuse me, seen some, those sometimes where they've switched and they're using 
the 7,000 for their county. And the, and the problem is, if you're not even consistent with that, now you've got your money intermixed. And that's what we're talking about. If you have a balance, you need to look back through the um, revenue history and make sure what's come into that fund. So you've identified all of that, because if there's county money mixed with, with money you're holding for other units, you need to get that separated out so you can truly get those distributed out and accounted for. Grant funds, um, those start at 8,000 uh, for federal grants and 9,000. The source and the purpose of those funds were established by your grant. So you always, always, always need to get um, a copy of your grant agreements so you know what to do with those funds. Um, I try as much as possible when I'm talking to your departments that they understand they gotta get a copy of that grant agreement into the auditor's office. They cannot disperse those funds if they don't know how to disperse them. So those grant agreements are really important for all of those. Um, and I think, ah, two minutes over. Time for break. Take two extra minutes. <laughs> <laughs>